Hi everyone, so it's a morning while I'm filming today and I've got sun in my face but luckily, oh you can see here, there's the sun, luckily there is nothing on the desk so it means it, it will look um, nice. Okay, so um, basically I've made an order um, on Crema and I got a few art supplies and there are also some stationery I got uh, last night at um, HomeSense which is um, I think if you are in the US then probably TK Maxx or TJ Maxx I think you call it would be um, a similar thing so let's start with the um, stationery so I got two um, diaries which I will keep for um, sort of you know like work related um, entrances so this so I got this one for the holographic design and I love the hot pink on the cover it kind of looks really cool it does um, scratch up easily though and it does bend and sort of create these kind of things so I don't know how it's going to look uh, at the end of the year but I just um, really like having something like this on my desk it's by the brand called Graphique, like this. Hopefully you can see. And um, yeah, so I do like the layout of it. So it's, it goes from Monday to Sunday in one page. And then on the next page, you can do additional notes. And the very same layout I actually have for the current diary or had for the for this year. So yes, very cool find. And the reason I like to get these things in home sense is because they cost really little. I think this one was, um, how much was it? Something like five quid or something like that. Really affordable. Um, then uh, this is just such a cool looking diary. I always like to have a small and a bigger one, like I said. The small one oftentimes comes with me if I need to go somewhere and I need to make sure if I, if, if I need to make an appointment and I need to see my diary, etc. So that kind of is for this. And the layout here is different. Um, you have a day per page, so it gives you loads of space to write things. And um, you don't get like a weekly overview, but you can f flip through quickly to the right day and just check it. So that's not the most comfortable layout for me, but um, nonetheless, because it, I will have two separate ones, um, I'm fine with it. So this one was £5, 4 The only uh, downside at shopping um, at HomeSense is their stickers that they put, which are very hard to take off. Um, but, you know, if, if they could work on that, that would be amazing. So the final thing that I got, by the way, <clears throat> I'll try to film, if I can, the um, that IKEA trolley that I finally assembled. And it's just so good. Literally, when I film and I have no more space on the table, then I can just roll it up close to me and put stuff in there. And I moved a couple of things from the, the desk, but I haven't yet cleared it up. So if I can, I'll try to film a footage uh, of, of it and either insert it here or at the end of the uh, video. So <clears throat> let's move on to the final thing I got. This is more of a warning not to get. Um, so I have never tried these. Uh, it's called talking tape. Why write when you can roll? So... I don't know whether typically it's just one word or it could be a phrase. I think I've seen phrase. But anyways, this is... Uh, is that by the company called Knock Knock? Possibly. And um, it's been reduced to 90p. So I thought, why was it so cheap? So anyways, I do realize now because it broke in about 20 seconds. It's a very flimsy kind of design. Very cheap sort of plastic that breaks very quickly. And some plastic bits just basically broke off in there which means no longer does the button actually work so you're supposed to click it in so that it, it opens up like a pen and then you push it in again and it sort of goes inside and stays there but at the moment as you can see it's just broke off so but I can still use it by making sure I push it and keep it in one place and then have to pull quite hard. Now, the like I said, the idea of it is 
quite fun. I always wanted to try one. So here we go. Um, so there is something I played around last night. And if you can see. So here I have some. Oh, there we go. Sorry, the sun is going a little bit. So here are some successes here. But again, um, sometimes it skips. Like here, you can see there's a big gap between. Sometimes it pulls letters. And um, other times it just sort of makes indentations in the paper. So this is very thin paper. And I had trouble to press it on the watercolor paper for some reason. And it made again a strong indentation. But if it would work, it's actually quite a cool addition to your journal page, I think. And I will try to use it up where I can. But it's just a poor, poor design. Um, I think I would look... I think, was it Heidi Swap? Either Heidi Swap or someone else has done a similar thing. It's like a rub-on kind of texture. It's got a glossy texture, but some rub-ons actually are matte. But anyways, I do find it looks quite neat. Okay, so we're back to normal light. So um, if you're curious about what I have right here, I will actually share it with you in another video. I just need to work a little bit more on it. It's kind of work in progress at the moment. Um, okay, so let's move on to the orders I've made on Crema. So I've got a couple of things. First of all, I really wanted this ceramic dish, which is the small one. Um, I've got a plastic one over here, which is bigger. So this is the size. And I always wanted this daisy kind of um, layout or design of the ceramic um, plate. Um, I have a couple now and I do find that working in them is so fun. And it's always good to have a few anyway, because I sort of use them for projects. I select um, some colors and I don't like to waste anything so I tend to keep it for another time where I can use a similar color scheme. <clears throat> the next thing I got was um, this uh, bamboo brush roll. So I actually expected it to be a bit smaller. If I grab my biggest brush because naturally I don't like to have big brushes. Um, this is where it ends, so I have this whole bit right here, which I don't really need. Um, but if you love tall and long-handled brushes, then I guess that's a bonus for you. Uh, like I said, you know, if if they would be, if this roll would be like this height, maybe um, I would prefer it because it just feels a little bit too long. <clears throat> I think they've just taken a regular bamboo like a placemat and, and stitch some fabric on it. I'm not sure. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, it's it's sort of or like a sushi mat roll. You know when you roll sushi? It looks similar to that. So it has a little thing here that you can secure. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine compartments, which will fit in your brushes like so. Let's just say <clears throat> I've got the brushes in here and then I would roll them up like that. And then I would secure it. Somehow, I'm not entirely sure how you're supposed to secure this, but um, possibly just in here somehow, I don't know. So that's it. That's your roll and you can stick it in. That's, that's why I'm saying it would take up a lot of space. If I had a rucksack and I wanted a small one or a bag, you know, it's great for sort of like suitcases or a big carry-on um, bag. But if you like to go to the park and you like to have not too big of a art supplies bag with you, then that's probably a little bit too long, too chunky. Um, so yeah, so at least now... I, if I travel and I want to take my brushes, I have a safe way to do that and um, 
that will be good for them. So the final thing I got is this artist mixing guide color wheel. There was also a mini one which was about half price so this one is quite expensive it's £9.19 so almost 10 quid as much it cost me as much as this ceramic tray which is quite heavy and you know quite substantial but um, this is a very um, valuable thing to have so if you are um, into mixing colors or you want to learn more um, or just have something to hand quite quickly in my head I know what color I want but I can never immediately think of what two colors I need to put together in some of the cases to mix that color so this would be very helpful and um, so it's got a variety of things so you can move it about and for example if you have um, let's say you've got a yellow and then you're going to add blue you have you're going to have green that's that's quite obvious however if we move it here then you can see how the colors change so if the yellow is a yellow orange you're going to get a different green to this green right and then if you add it to orange you're going to get get a gray um, <clears throat> and then you're going to get a purple etc so you can go all the way around and see what colors you would get if you mix this particular blue with any of the others but then now, you also have the gray scale on the side here so going from 100% of white to a hundred percent of black so you can um, if you have um, a painting. Let me just pull this one out just to show you quickly. So for example here I could just slide it in this if I want it really close and you can see that the frame is 100% well some parts of it are 100% black which is value 1 and some parts are value two so that would help you let's do actually this gray one so this one would be value nine um and then the light would be value 10. Um, this would be quite helpful if you want to learn more about values so sh shadows and lights and darks and here it gives you some additional information about primary colors secondary colors territory colors warm cool um hue value intensity tin tone shade natural or neutral gray so that's that and then if you look here you've got two violets one violet is a cool violet and this red violet is a warm violet and basically from this point you get the cool side and this is the warm side and then when you look at this side you get again towards here it's a warm side and towards here it's the cool side so basically all of these colors this half circle are cool colors and these this half circle is the warm on the other side so this is quite interesting here shade tone tint um, so the pure color starts with say for example yellow green and then this is the tint color, this is the tone, and this is the shade. So and the other thing you can do is look at the opposite. So those would be complementary colors. And what I think happens if you mix the colors, you will end up with a neutral color, like a grayish color. So any of those that you mix opposite. However, if you don't mix the colors, but you want... Um, like a visually um, interesting kind of um, result what you can do is you can paint a painting say for example in um, like this sort of red orange color like for example say you're painting um, poppies a field of poppies if you would then add little bits of the blue green which is right opposite it would lift the whole thing up and make it quite interesting so that's something very very useful just to have here 
you know, out of the top of my my head, I do know that um, the opposites work. But then when it comes to actually knowing which one yellow, there is, you know, two yellows here. So the yellow that's a cool yellow works with the violet. The one that's um, yellow orange works with the blue violet. So that's something quite useful. So it's it's quite interesting to learn about this. Very useful to have. So I will be using this quite a lot. All right. So this is it for today. And I hope it was somewhat useful. And thanks for watching and see you soon.